Can't believe I'm right here at the foot of Snowdon, having run here from Swansea. Just can't actually believe that I've managed to get this far. It was almost exactly a year ago now that I set off. Looking at the weather outside, it's very cold and the nights are very long and the days are very short. So yeah, not a good time to be trying to run up every single mountain in Wales. I wouldn't say that the mountains have always been that friendly to me. I've definitely had some very rough times in them, but there's always been something that has kept pulling me back. And I think it's that something that kind of drew me to wanting to run up every single mountain in Wales in one go. Will talks about Wales relentlessly. He's always thinking of projects and expeditions that he can do to take him back there again and again. So I guess my infatuation with Wales' mountains goes right back to when I was about 19 years old. I'd come back home to Wales in between terms and was kind of pissing off my mum by just being quite um, sedate, if that's the word for it. So um, she, she suggested that I go and walk a trail called the Offers Dyke Path. After that, I just kind of wanted more. I wanted more of Wales. I wanted to see more of Wales. And I started ticking off all the various routes. The problem was that I was starting to run out of, uh, of trails to walk. I was just browsing the news one day and that popped an article saying, two men complete continuous round of all of Wales' mountains. And as soon as I saw that route, I just thought, I've got to go and do that. That looks incredible. And yeah, the seed was planted. I gave myself about a year to prepare for it. Because of the pandemic, that, that delayed things, so I had to wait another year. And what I realised with this Wales challenge was that walking it would take a long time, over a month, and I didn't have that time to take off work. So then I thought, well, what if I tried running it? Just throw myself into the challenge. I definitely thought Will was mad from the, from the outset trying this. I was there with the privilege of, of seeing him off on the, on the first mile. Truth be told, I was not confident that Will was going to make it. So the route started off going through the urban sprawl of Swansea and then eventually the city petered out and I was into the South Wales valleys and then eventually they petered out and I was just all of a sudden within the wilds of the Bracken Beacons. And within a day, I was actually on the first of my 189 mountains of the challenge. Here's number one then. Number one of 189, <laughs> which is quite a, I don't know, a daunting thing to say out loud, especially when you can see, and I've got this view of a lot of the mountains I've got to take on all the way into the Cambrian Mountains over there and then the rest of the Black Mountain range and the Bracken Beacons stretched out ahead of me which we've got to take on today. In a weird way I'm actually just looking forward to it. Over the next three days things went well for me probably too well. You probably can't see it but that behind me there Summit of Penavan, highest in South Wales. I think that's um, two mountain ranges to go now. <laughs> and I was a little bit overexcited and started out in the classic way. I started out too fast. A little bit of a concern. This right, my right ankle is really niggling. So I've, um, which is pretty scary this far into the challenge. Yeah, it's, it's kind of forced me to walk for a lot today. You know, I'm still covering the ground that I need to in order to finish this challenge within three weeks, but um, it could be a little bit painful if this doesn't clear up. And then I quickly developed blisters as well, and the blisters came thick and fast. We met Will at Clungeon Dodwell. He looked like he was in a pretty bad way. He had quite a distinctive sort of hobble. Look away now, Mem, you're not going to want to see this bit. saw him, he sort of took his 
shoes and socks off and then lo and behold you can see all these pretty horrendous blisters like straight down to almost the bare bone of his ankles actually. I remember Will calling me early on when he was thinking of quitting and I think it hit him all at once how far he had to run, how high he had to run, how many mountains he had to run and the insurmountable total finally just became too much. 189 is such a vast number, I can't even picture it myself so I think that's probably what gave him his wobble but I knew that if he just thought about it one foot in front of the other, I knew that he could do it. The, um, the road ahead was looking very, very daunting this time yesterday. So I thought long and hard and decided to take an extra, an extra day off. I'm so, so glad I did now because my body feels so much better. Um, like I'm actually able to run again. So touch wood and carry on running. Um, none of those injuries return. And that's the end of the Bracken Beacons. Five days in there. They absolutely broke me. <laughs> and then eventually I got to Pym Limon, which is a mountain that's almost slap right bang in the middle of Wales. And it felt like a really pivotal moment for me. It was the place I thought would be an admirable dropout to show that I actually had given things a crack. Pym Limon. All ahead of me. Snowdonia. North Wales, you can see Cadre Idris, you can see Aravaudi, I think I can just about see the Kildaroi. Stood there on the summit, that was the first point that it had crossed my mind that I might actually be able to complete the ridiculous challenge of running up every single mountain in Wales. With our chat on the first morning, he burnt his toast, which I thought, that's probably the last warm food you might have that's not out of a, a sachet for a while. My whole approach to this was a very lightweight approach, a very minimalist approach. Nothing in terms of a change of clothes or any luxuries. My tent was just a, a tarp propped up by my tent pole. Uh, my diet pretty much consisted of things like instant mash, instant noodles. Welcome to the tent diaries. Just trying to decide whether I want to have spice sensation couscous or Idaho and instant mash cheddar cheese flavour. Genuinely split on this. Do I want what feels like substance or do I want flavour? I wish I could have the two together, but I'm rationing. I was in the shop for another two days or something. In terms of drink as well, I had a, a basic water filter with me and could just drink from any puddle that I could come across along the way. My feet were just constantly wet the whole time. Actually, every part of me was wet the whole time. And there were no opportunities to wash, really. I, I had to take any moment I could get whether that was swimming in a river or just using puddle water. First wash in about a week. Felt so good. I could have just a tiny little nick on my skin, a little cut, and it would get infected. I felt like I was covered in infections. But things like personal hygiene at the time didn't really cross my mind. I'm, I'm a bit of a dirtbag when it comes to mountain time. I'll always sacrifice hygiene for the sake of having to carry a few extra grams. North Wales, the mountains there are a different kind of mountain to South and Mid Wales. That's where things get quite gnarly. That's where things get really wild and, and really high up as well. I don't think I anticipated just how brutal the North Wales stage was gonna be for me though, because 
I just had day after day of heavy rain, low cloud and strong winds and it became a real test of my resolve. There were times when I'd be running where a path should be standing but actually it was a river. There used to be a path here. The water was just pouring down off the mountain and I had huge issues with my kit. Everything is wet. Freezing cold. I don't know why, but everything got wet in here last night. It just reminds you why I hate camping in bad weather. I was waking up in puddles, I was pulling on my down jacket and it would be just sodden with water and then I'd have to run, run all day in the rain and go to bed wet as well. There was no point where, where I could try out. I feel quite bad for saying this, but I never... I don't think I actually believed that he'd do it until he was about in Snowdonia. The terrain, as you'd expect with North Wales, got very challenging as well, with mountains like the Moyle Winyon, the Renogith, Snowdon itself as well, and ridges like Crib Gore. Okay, so I've had to completely rejig my route because of the weather. Today is the only day of okay weather. The rest of the week apparently is gonna be absolutely rough. Even the weather lady hinted at something big on the way uh, on the weekend, which isn't ideal. So I changed my plans and I was gonna do Snowden kind of a few days, well, a day or two from now, but actually I'm doing it today because I just don't wanna be taking on Crib Gore, the knife edge ridge in howling gales. Tell you what, I'm lucky. It's not blowing a hoolie as of yet. Crib Gork then, which I'm quite happy about. Almost highest in Wales now. Will be one about there. So I may have snowed in after 16 days of running. I think that day I covered around 30 miles. I must have climbed about six mountains. That was one of the, the biggest days of the whole trip. It was also at that point, and I was looking at my map from the day, and looking at the, my route for the next day, and then something just jumped out at me. It was a mountain called Moil Panamnen, and my heart sank when I realised that I'd missed it out on the on that day's running. It crossed my mind: could I just leave it out and hope no one noticed? And I thought, if if I'd done that, what would be the point of of completing the challenge, really? So I decided that I would reroute and go and bag it, and that would involve another. 30, 35 miles right out in the other direction. And to have to commit a whole day to going out to rebag that was, uh, it was quite hard to take. But I got it done. The feeling up there was, yeah, really good. Things aren't gonna get harder from here. One thing I found on this run, especially today in the Glidari, always possible to actually run. Uh, which way down? That said, there's still the Carnedi to, um, to take on, which aren't even that much 
aren't, aren't that much shorter than Snowden. They're all part of the Welsh 3000s. It turned out that the, ch the challenge was a challenge right up until the bitter end. Can't end I throwing everything at the academy on this last day. I'm absolutely knackered. I've got so much to do still. I don't even know how that happened. I think I'm going to be going well into the night. Last night, still going. Got the miles to make up. It's been really, really tricky out here. I'm knackered. I have said that I'll be at Comby Castle Gates at 11 a.m. tomorrow. I'm hoping there'll be some people to cheer me in. But I might leave them disappointed. I was there to film his last summit. Originally, we'd um, planned to meet the night before, where he'd do the final summit, like sort of sundown. But he was really far behind schedule at the time, in relatively bad weather, which worsened whilst I was up there. It's got worse dramatically, actually. He just wasn't wasn't able to make it. He still had like three summits to bag, so he'd be running through the night. And then the weather he was treated to on that final night, I mean, I was like concerned for him. Things were really cold, and I, I don't think I could have put up with one more night of it. And it's quite sad, actually, because when I set out on this challenge, I said to Hannah, when this whole thing stops being fun, I will stop. But the problem is that I had got so far into the challenge that stopping then would be in my eyes, throwing away everything I'd done. I picked Mind Over Mountains as my chosen charity for my fundraising for this, because I like the idea of Mind Over Mountains as a charity that helps people to access the mountains, helps people who wouldn't normally be able to access them get out and have that headspace. It meant a lot to me that he did this for a mental health charity. Um, one of my friends committed suicide a number of years ago <laughs> and he was on a, a wait list to to get help but um, he he didn't get it in time so I think it's incredible the work that Mind Over Mountains does and I'd like to think if my friend had had an intervention with a charity like that sooner he'd still be here Now he's endured wild winds, storms and an injured ankle. But Will Rennick has finally completed his epic challenge to run up every mountain over 2,000 feet in Wales. That's a total of 189. The last mountain, Talavan, and it was quite a weird feeling getting to the summit because the emotion just suddenly swept over me. I don't want to cry. Just come into sight of Conway Castle. So this journey is nearly at an end. And someone's just messaged me to say that I'm 500 pounds off, 10,000 pounds for Mind Over Mountains, which is incredible. Set out to raise 2,000 pounds and it's just gone up and up and up. It was kind of a happy moment as well because I had had a real adventure and had a time in my life that I'll always remember. I said earlier about what brings me back to the mountains and I think one of the things that I've managed to put my finger on is the simplicity that you find there, especially on um, multi-day adventures because all of a sudden life becomes very clear all you need to do in a day is put one foot in front of the other and worry about where you're going to eat and where you're going to sleep. You don't have to worry about all these erroneous things. And I think it's that simplicity that keeps drawing me back and keeps drawing me back to the trails of Wales. <laughs>